So I call certain names in the morning. Now let me call some more names. Uh, Dr. V. Suburayan. Dr. V. Suburayan. Dr. M. Lakshmi. Dr. M. Lakshmi. Dr. P. Rajendran. Here. Dr. E. Puamal. I said not only, okay, okay. Okay, fine. Fine, fine but I think we have started, so. <laughs> okay, anyone from here who has not spoken so far? So you can share your takeaway and your doubts or queries, whatever. Ma'am has not spoken, no? Yes, yes. Till now. Till the lunch break. <laughs> So I understood like the vision and mission of an institute. Like yesterday, you was telling about the vision and mission of an uh, institute also to Keep be the related, mic close, yeah, yeah. to be uh, related with the human values. Like uh, when I just looked after my institute's vision and mission, I think uh, we haven't uh, touched it. So I think uh, we should do it in the uh, longer way. And the next is like uh, the right understanding because I I'm not very much familiar with the term of physical facility. And yesterday, uh, honestly speaking, yesterday uh, I learnt about what is what uh, we mean about the physical facility, how much importance we give to the physical facility, and uh, that understanding came to me only today. Like we are giving more importance to the physical facility rather than the understanding and the relationship. And as you said, I have to go and just count down what all the uh, facilities which we have in excess and how we have to uh, dwell much more in uh, relations so that understanding i uh, i had today from this morning session i think we have this uh, understanding you were there yesterday no sir you were there yesterday yeah okay, okay nice and the values, whatever the yesterday's um, uh, uh, that is a feedback form has given me a question like whether these values can be taught as subjects. So I think uh, so students will never have the interest over when it has been taught as subjects. Even then they will be giving the least importance only. That has to be taught as a value uh, in the classes. So like the first sessions and the second sessions like that we have to say to them rather than teaching them with the subject. So these are all the takeaway points for so If you allow discussion, if you allow questioning, then they will take interest. Yeah, yeah, that's what, sir. So with the first we need to understand that, then we should have the this thing to explain it to the students so that they'll have the real understanding. Thank What's you, sir. What's your name, ma'am? Chitra, Dr. Chitra. Okay. Here. No, here, ma'am is here. So good afternoon to all. Uh, from my understanding, from the takeaway from yesterday was, uh, the, even in the priorities, I have just given understanding myself, first understanding ourselves. Then the third one only comes the physical facility. So the excess, as we know that we have excess, and then we need to divide it among the other things also, all that is fine. But today we had some discussion on happiness, happiness, happiness comes from within, whether we have to take up happiness like that, and we have to make ourselves happy, whether that is true or whether I will make the opposite person happy or not. So that and all, it again depends upon the self only. I want to be happy means I should be happy with the surroundings here and I am happy here. But I want to make others happy including the family. Let's not talk only about the personal, personal, personal issues. By like uh, myself becoming uh, angry with my husband. I have to change myself, I know. But uh, we were talking about whether the other man is not reciprocating the same. See, I expect my husband also to show the happiness to me. But he doesn't reciprocate. And then we actually add it like this. No, no, his nature is like that, his attitude is like that, and always. Now here I want to bring about the gender discrimination, what we were talking here in the beginning also. Uh, we have a little bit, we go for a little submissive. We always adjust, we always are in the uh, receiving end, mostly, mostly. So I keep myself happy and I try to see that he also becomes happy. 
but that is not the reciprocating from him so uh, as you are asking intentionally i am not doing anything to make him unhappy uh, but i still i am unable to read now see if i tell you 35 years of married life you have completed 35 years uh, in states and all they say they 35 years with the same man you are living they are asking <laughs> that is a joke actually but in indian culture whether we like or not we just move on like this so and um, 35 years of married life is over but still i am still unable to understand but most of the times we give give up give up yesterday also it happened uh, i don't know whether you know it or not we say chandrashtam there is one line called chandrashtamam chandrashtamam nadakarade he will behave like that that means for that particular two days whatever we talk it will end in a quarrel this is about the family okay now about the students <laughs> regarding the students sir happiness sir, we try to be very good with them we take classes all of us are hods and deans and professors and all but we know that uh, the generation gap is there they are going on looking at their mobiles and they are not and they are not looking into you so what they feel is ma'am the brain activity you know if you take continuously a ppt presentation like this it will be lasting only for 30 to 35 minutes he reads and he tells me now my boy or my post graduate student tells me ma'am our ability brain ability to listen to you is only for 30 to 35 minutes he like that he says so they want uh, different type of activities like uh, right now we are having in curriculum and syllabus a lot of uh, pro activities we go with the students we teach them we make them uh, talk to us and all that interactive sessions we are bringing in like what is being told here anyway i feel that this particular this is the first time i'm attending uhv it's very nice it is uh, taking me in the right direction i think i'll try to control my anger and try to make the other people also happy that's the moral of the story so far i think i'm trying to accept myself and also the opposite not the opposite the other <laughs> thank you what's your name dr nalini i am a pulmonologist yes ma'am uh, okay okay nice yeah. yeah, she's i'm pushpalata uh so your name please once again i'm pushpalata heading okay. computing technologies okay ji yes uh so yesterday's takeaway is like uh the prime takeaway will be le- let us not whatever we want whatever what is our need we have to go with it uh let us not accumulate things and uh, we should not assume that is our wealth or uh, prosperity uh so that is one takeaway i had and uh, the other one is let us understand ourselves and ensure that uh so that our physical facilities are reduced so that it can be given to the needy uh, people uh today's takeaway i would say i'm more uh, into the last session uh sometimes when we do, do mistakes we we always feel that it is unintentional but when others do it is intentional it happens maybe in family or maybe in the workplace uh, even when our kid do something wrong uh, the same mistake we would have done but uh, we we are not ready to accept that so so these are some of the takeaways so intentionally even we have to trust people so that the incident what had happened may not be intentional so that is the common takeaway i have taken in the last uh, session very nice yes ma'am good afternoon all so my takeaway from Your yesterday name, is uh, dr swarnalata sir swarnalata swarnalata swarna okay. okay my takeaway from yesterday session the difference between need and want so that i like very much so from here onwards i have to start whether it comes under need <laughs> okay. or whether it uh, comes under uh, want yeah. and then uh, self understand and the next desire so desire the problem everything starts from the desire so here desire uh, i understood that behind the desire there are three categories whether it ca- has come from uh, pre conditioning or sensation uh, sensations or self acceptance i understood very well about the pre conditioning and the sensation but still i am in confused state what is self acceptance natural acceptance now okay natural acceptance i yeah. still have uh, not very much understood about that and then uh, real understanding also still i am in confusion only so what do, actually what it is real understanding myself so till now right uh, okay <laughs> right understanding so i thought i know better means i know everything about myself so now here it is teaching then you have to understand yourselves i don't know what else i have to understand about myself 
So that also I'm having some query in that. And understanding about others. So understanding about others also, uh, that also I don't know how to exactly, uh, the right understanding of others, how we have to inculcate. So what makes us to understand right away, uh, right from the others, that is also. So if you look at question 1A and 2A, this is understanding yourself. 3 and 4A is understanding the other. So this, from this point, I, I know, means uh, the difference between intention and the competency. That is okay, sir. That we have yeah, to first think intent. from their perspective of intention, but not from their capability or uh, competence. But understanding, I don't know how uh, really what we think about others, whether it is correct or not, that how it comes. Uh, so when it comes to understanding oneself, we can see that as a human being, self is there, body is there. These are two distinct realities. This is something that we discussed earlier, isn't it? Is that clear? So that's why I'm waiting, sir. <laughs> their needs are different, their activities are different, their response is different. The two are different. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we can look into the imagination. When I go to study myself, that I have activities of desire, thought, expectation, then what is the source of desire that we can mm -hmm. see? That source of desire, okay. Yeah. So what is the real understanding of myself, sir? Right understanding means I'm able to understand myself as I am. So I am able to see myself different from the body as a conscious entity. I am able to see my activities. I am able to see the source of my activities. And I am also able to see my natural acceptance. This is understanding oneself. The more I see my natural acceptance, my activities develop. The activities of right understanding develop. In terms of that only we talked about the intention and the competence. So I can see that intentionally I want to be happy, I want to make the other happy. If I am able to understand myself the same way I can understand the other also. Every other human being here is coexistence of self and body. Isn't it? And judging other, uh, others also, that how to change ourselves, that also. Judging means that I am not able to see the natural acceptance in the other. I have some conditioning based on which I am comparing, good or bad, based on some conditioning in me, without being clear what is good, what is bad. So generally we go by judging because we are conditioned some way or the other. And then we compare people on the basis of that conditioning, which may not help. Okay. Judging and evaluating are two different things. When I evaluate, I look into the value part. When I judge, I look into the conditioning part most of the time. Okay. Nice, Thank nice. Ma'am is left. Ma'am on your left hand side. Please, yes. Sir, <laughs> I am a volunteer, sir, for the MP. Okay, 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 fine. <laughs> <laughs> sir. We are also volunteers. We volunteer for the <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. <clears throat> we are all living in a cynical world, and this is a <clears throat> wake up call for everybody. You have to name yourself. Uh, my, my name is Mahesh. Okay. Uh, so, I'm a HOD in hotel management department. And uh, this is a wake-up call for everybody. You look into yourself, go back to 20 years, 30 years back. You know, uh, the nature acceptance. Uh, that is the one thing we take away with this program. And rest of the words and phrases, somewhat it's all confusing. But re in reality, you look into yourself. For example, you get an anger. When you get an anger, naturally you don't accept others. So others' behavior, you get punishment. That's what I felt in this program. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Good afternoon, sir. This is Uma Mageshwari from Rama Brahm campus. Uh, the ultimate aim of this program is to transfer what are the things we learned for these three days we need to transfer to the students. Uh, since we are, uh, from the first day itself, we are say, I'm saying that uh, since we are uh, 70s, 80s kids, you can able to manage us very easily Then you made us to sit uh, up to 5.30 yesterday. But that itself is a very big task to us because we are handling 2K kids. That itself is a very big task. And uh, as a 70s, 80s kids, uh, we are having some values because our brought up is like that. We had some values from our grandparents and from our parents. But uh, in current scenario, 
students are not in a position to take our words, what we are trying to transfer to them. They are not in a position to take all those things. Then how to make our students to understand all these things, how to inculcate these qualities to them. For that, uh, we need a very good brainstorming session. Then only these things will reach our students. Uh, then we can achieve our goals. By getting to dialogue with them, that's all. You have to put the right proposal in front and let them question, let them explore and then help them explore. Let them ask questions, whatever question they have and then we can respond to every question and then help them understand, help them investigate. Look they are them. all in a comfort zone. If you are trying to make them to come out of that comfort zone, they'll feel somewhat uh, uh, not feeling good. So See, they might be in comfort zone, but they are not comfortable. <laughs> yes. But after, uh, after 20, after the age of 25 only, they'll come to know about all these things. No, no, not but that. During fact, uh, see, we have been teaching students like this in our colleges also. And we have very much interest. They will ask all sorts of questions, right? And you just try to respond to those questions, help them understand. And then they will gain interest. And now students are coming up with their own ideas. How to make good projects based on this. In my college, students came to me and said that we will develop a chatbot. You know, whatever questions one may have, let us develop a chatbot so that one can get the uh, answer to every question. Somebody writes, I am feeling low today and let the chatbot respond, how you can feel high. <laughs> okay, I, have, I do not have good relationship with my friend, how do I manage and then let it respond. So students are coming up with these ideas, so much of creativity is there. They are working on projects, product, products, ideas, you know, where this whole thing can be taken up in a very natural way to the entire community, entire society. How to develop the feeling of self-regulation in the students? Okay, we'll try to do. Yes. Oh, thank you. Sir. Lot of possibilities there. Yes, uh, yeah. sir. I, I want to say something about Madam said. See, whatever they learn from the grandparents to parents, the present day parents to fail to transfer this to the present, their child. This is what my opinion. Because in those days uh, in the house, at least any one will be going to be officer, rest of them in the home. They do work uh, to take care of the children or in the house. But the present day parents, both of them are working. They do have enough money, but they don't have time to spend to their children to transfer the whatever they learn from the parents. See, making the students in line are to understand, not only the teacher's responsibility, it's a parent's responsibility is more on that. Yeah, and we also may not have lived the same way as our parents did. So they're also saying that when you did not do the whole thing as your parents did, why do us? So at least some basic, basic, basic manner, basic things, they said to learn. Yeah. They have to give the tolerance. Nowadays, most of the families have a single child. Because those people who are having sing single child, they do not have a sharing mentality, tolerance at all. Whatever they want, they want to get it done. If it is failed, they get upset. Yeah, so ultimately, you will see that I am responsible for my conduct, isn't it? So if my conduct is not humane, then I may not be able to validate in my living to my child also. And the child is questioning it, <coughs> isn't it? They are questioning it. They will always question us. Yeah. And we do not but have the right as answers. as a parent's role and responsibility is more. Yeah. It's not that I am responsible for my conduct. I am responsible for my kids' conduct as well. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, so... It passes off automatically. Yeah, so, yeah, so the inculcation, the inculcation that I have transferred, that is my responsibility. Pardon? Ah, one minute. Yeah, we'll talk about, we'll see how this inculcation is taking place in the family. See, if the child is not getting resolved by the parents, then the child starts looking outwards, toward the teacher. 
the teacher himself or herself is not resolved. And after a certain age, they are looking towards their peers. And, uh, and they are themselves in trouble. So they join together, saying that now we are of a different age, different, you know, there is some kind of gap, this is a different generation, and then those problems crop up. And ultimately, neither parents are resolved, nor teachers are resolved, nor the students are resolved, and all are finding differences. I kind of agree with you. I kind of agree with you. I'm telling you why. I tell you why. If you put five states, all the five kids are growing up in the same environment till the age of 12, right? Then they go to high school, college, and they, they go on. But after 20 years, if we see them, everybody is unique, is different. It's really interesting also. So I don't want to say that because I don't want to think that whatever I thought all the values are the right values too. There may be some, some, some values which I learned it wrongly also because I'm a human being too. I learned it wrongly or I'm doing it, I'm practicing wrongly. But my question right now is, even though they were grown up, the same time they spent with me, all the thing till 12 years, the, their behavior or their values are different. Their yeah, values so it are may different. be the case At least that the perception, the, the perception, no, I should not believe, the perceived, the perception that I have what their value is different. Yeah, yeah. So it may be the case that the 12 years that they spent with us. Yeah, it may be the case that the early age that they spent with us, we have not been able to ensure the right understanding in them. We have not been able to resolve them. This is our lack of competence. They spent their early years with us, but we did not have the right answer to their questions. So we were conditioned in some manner. They did not agree to our conditioning. They are questioning our conditioning. So this is a common scenario. We look at the lack of competence in the other and then doubt the intention of the other. Yeah, I was taking some feedback from those who have not spoken so far. Yes, ma'am. You have to speak up. Yes. <laughs> Sir, I just wanted to add, see, everybody knows the value. So the people who are all sitting First here, take away. Yeah, take away the val in value is known, but the thing is we are not practicing it. The, so we are talking about society, but society is also impacting us. So what we see that we try to practice, that is the problem of now, right? The current scenario, whatever they see in the media, whatever they think that is correct, that is what we are trying to, even though sir said, the uh, daughter was with us uh, and uh, we were practicing. Now the values are different Bet because now because of globalization and other things, it, you know, our values and cultures, whatever we think uh, that is good, that is not good for the other person. And uh, we have to mutually respect each other, right? And uh, there is no, what since we are dealing with uh, 2K, 90Ks, all the kids, what we understand now is there is no patience with the student, kids. Patience, like the device, right? Even the device, mobile, if it is uh, not giving the output within two or uh, three, one second, that makes them frustration. So the patience is not there. Even the parents are guiding them. Actually, we, I got a complaint from a, a parent uh, because we stay in the university building and the classes are in the uh, top floor, the student has to go in the lift. The parent comes and complains how, how my child will wait for the lift. She has no practice of waiting. So we, I said, here we will train them how to be patient. That's what the answer. So we are also, somewhere we are also giving a wrong example to our kids, right? We are talking that kids are getting spoiled because of the uh, mobile, but we are not uh, avoiding it when we are at home. We are spending most of our time with the mobile or with the big screen or small screen. But most of the time we are spending with it. So the change should happen each and every individual. That is what I understand. The change should come from within. Each and every individual turns, then definitely the society will also turn. Yeah, nice. Only thing I would like to clarify, it's not the case that I know but I don't practice. It cannot be the case. It is there as an information to me. But I have not come to know it, and that's no, why it is I not in my living. I should not use mobile for a long time still, because we will be getting so many messages. If even, no?
So that is, that is the thing, sir. So even the small thing. So we should uh, keep the mobile off after some time. That, is, that has to be practiced. That is what I thought. But that is not being done by me. So because of some other uh, situation. So small, small things. Yeah. We are not able to uh, strictly follow that. And we are trying to compromise. That is what I try to do. You compromise, you teach your kids also how to compromise. Nice. Ma'am ma has not spoken. Yes. Since we are not practicing, they are also not practicing. Sir, with your permission. <laughs> so Sir, with your, is, with your permission, yes. can I say something about child? Eh? I'll just sing a two-line song. Eh? In, but it will be in Tamil. I hope uh, Allah will appreciate that. Eh? I like her in the part. I love part of her in the Pachikili Kurte Vandi Pool, Totili Kati Vaitin, Adil Patu Giludan, Unseed again, Melin Itu Vaitin, Nanara Ruin Ritalat, Indra Ruin. This line is going to be very important for all of us because we are discussing about uh, the child. In the Kuran, the Yumnal Kuran, the Idan Manil Pirakaili. So that's what sir, I want to convey. <laughs> It is parents. In that they are using a word annai. Annai means mother. It is not so. It is the family. Family means the part um, uh, grandfather, grandparents, father, mother. So, see, it is not those days and the present day. See, it is the responsibility of the family to take care of the child. See, what they are getting uh, into their brain is, as Madam pointed out, most of the time it is because of us. I used to question parents, like, my child is using this word from where she learned or he learned. From you. From you. You are using the word between you, maybe for fun or whatever it may be. Your child is so curious. Because a learning stage of one or two years means they are so curious. They learn something. And when they utter it, it is hurting you. You are freely using this word between you, among family members or friends or whatever it may be, and the fault is falling on the child. It's a fault of the family system, basically. So, uh, as uh, uh, he pointed out, previously it was a joint family. So, I was with 18 cousins. We used to sit in one room to eat. I have to take my plate, I have to what clean. I have to clean. After food, I have to clean everything, including the plate. That was the tradition. By seeing uh, my grandfather, everyone will be frightened. Like He was a terror, but he shows his love like anything. After that, the control goes and he takes uh, us around and we used to play with him. That was the tradition. Now it is gone. The, the single uh, horse chariot he was having. We enjoyed that trip, 14 kilometers I have to uh, travel to go to my uh, mother's house. So he, my grandfather from that side, mother's side, he used to come and pick us for vacations. That was a pleasure. They are also cousins once again. So family tradition, family culture and other things gradually got transferred to children. And now we are finding fault with the um, uh, husband, finding fault with the wife, wife finding fault with the husband, parents finding fault with the children, children finding fault with... See, all these things are mechanized and we are not finding, we are not spending, we are not spending useful time with us. Recently I was um, uh, um, uh, at Frankfurt, I was with a professor 
After 5 o'clock, what is the purpose of television, he told. Because after 5, we are all together. We have to spend the time for each one of us. Even today, if you go to almost all the houses, evening 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock only, the TV becomes more active. Okay? After entering into the house, four people or five people or three people, that is the size of the family. Everyone, and the TV, whether anyone is watching or not, also it is just like that. <laughs> it's yeah, on. So, so what okay, is the solution? Use, useful time spent between family members yeah. have gone down. <laughs> not useful time, quality time. Quality time. Quality time. So yeah. that is one major reason why several things. See, I have to appreciate my wife. My wife has to appreciate me. I have to appreciate my children. My children have to appreciate us. That feeling has gone. That, that give and take has gone. That is yeah, one of the major reasons. That's what we were mentioning yesterday life, also. That quality of family sir, life has sir, gone. We are suffering on account I, I, of... I just want to touch another point what you mentioned. You remember that your, your, your grandfather was good right now. But during that time, you thought, you thought oh, he was very strict, right? You didn't like him that much at that time. Is it true or not? No, no, do one thing. You can turn to this side. But generally speaking, <laughs> then I can see him. <laughs> Otherwise, it becomes a kind of, no? Conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, um, in every instance, if you look at it very well, you know, I had a grandfather who was very strict too. Uh, at that time, I felt, you know, he was too strict on me and everything. Uh, but now I see, you know, I gained something because of that. There's a value there. And yeah, so us that's what values. we were discussing yesterday, that you today know. we are too much engrossed with physical facilities and that's how we do not have time for relationship. We are not able to fulfill the relationship and ultimately we are suffering on that account. In the old days, the children do not have time for me. But what is the solution now? This that's more important. <laughs> well, it's going to come soon. Yes. No, it is the solution that we have to give the right priority to relationship. Turn off the TV. And we have to understand the relationship. Yeah. Take a mic. She is holding the mic. No, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, from yesterday and today's session, <clears throat> one thing that I got rectification, I share one example. I've been, my son said he wants to participate with this clay fruit mating things. And then we were doing practice. The day he was supposed to do practice in another school independently, he went and he did it. When he came back, I asked him, how was the day? Did you have a fun like that? He said, he's four year old. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. And he said, did you make? He said, yes. But then with this verification thing, I started looking like the clue that he has done it. He was saying I have done it, but the clay was as it is. They were full packed. In fact, there was an extra set of clay that I did not send. And there was a no, um, no clue, but he was saying, Mama, I have done it. I felt very bad because I've been teaching him and I've been ensuring that I do not say even a single lie. So since he's born, I have not been lied to him or family members. Okay. Then I felt, I, yes, I did. A lot with my mother, with parents, I did, yes. <clears throat> but then I was looking for this verification and the trust. So I, he was trusting, then I was not able to trust him. That made me feel very bad. And then I was, but I was still trying to talk to him and he was saying, Mama, whatever you said, I did, Mama. But then I was in terms of looking for a clue for the verification. And then I, by 10 o'clock, I cried also. My son said, Mama, don't cry. Trust me, I have made the things. But I, but I was feeling bad that I was not able to trust him, although he was saying, and it was a very small thing. But from two, and I felt bad, and then I corrected myself. I said sorry to him. But kids, actually, because we all are very busy with our work, and uh, parents, both the parents are busy with their work. So we just call them and find out how are your exams going on, how did you do it, and whatever. And evening we go and we spend a little time with the dinner time only. And at that time we don't have to have time to listen what they are saying also. So listening skills for us is also getting down. So uh, they have a very half an hour or one hour time only to tell us what has happened for the past 13 to 14 hours in a day. So we don't have that much of time to listen to them. So what we we take it as when they call up and say that, ma'am, uh, ma, this has happened and I've done this. So we are trusting more. So trust has become more on them, but are they doing it correctly or not? We are not able to check it out. So that's what is happening. The trust is becoming more. As uh, now also we, we now for past two or three years, the student ratio of problems have become more 
the problems are coming more to us like uh, as a uh, as an hod or the principals whatever it is each and every day there are at least two or three students problems which comes in where we say that it's wrong but parents say no no ma that is not the problem at all i know my daughter my son or daughter i trust him he has not done it but the report and everything says that he has done it and so essentially it, it, it not would trust. be a bit so and that trust is becoming because of less or lack of the concentration that we are giving to our kids and so essentially uh, let me respond yeah. essentially that is not trust that is assuming because you do not have time to share you do not have time to have a dialogue have so you are assuming that yes let yes, it be it would have done. as it is that is what that yeah. is what is required yeah so trust is something else trust means being assured of the intention mm. even if my child is committing a mistake intentionally he is pure but only that since i am not giving time the right inculcation is not there the education is not there to you know, develop him the right way that's how the mistakes are happening no uh, within faraz itself there was a girl who had gone to france he had she had a problem there she had done it she is uh, she is an anger girl she uh, it's like from her uh, college time or something she had that anger problem or whatever it is she had a problem but that problem had come to us to a mail but what the parents had to the parent what did she said was uh, it was her uh, health problem that she is coming back as as, um, as it is she was sent back from the france actually yeah. so this is not desirable so, but, defending but the child even if the child is coming to the state and yeah. they had taken a medical certificate also bringing that certificate saying that she has come only for medical because they have a trust on her but her brother feels that she has done a wrong that so is not parents, what i am saying because wait, wait, wait. they have not given much of time to her she had become into that she was in hostel and everything so what i am saying it is not trust since the parents do not have time mm. so they na, yes. are trying to portray a sunny picture of the conduct of the child which is not true they are trying to defend the child cover the child mm. which will ultimately spoil the child in fact children nowadays are threatening their parents that if you don't defend family. me i will commit suicide yes. 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 They want to, uh, <laughs> and the children and the they, parents fear or i will call the police <laughs> We have incidents of calling the police for not permitting a student to write the test exam. Police came. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now that's what I'll talk about it. Emergency number of police hundred. And they are harassing. She used to the word the examiners are harassing. Yeah, yeah. To that extent, and where? We talk to him, him. Parents feel that it is a mistake of the examiners. Yeah, the parents have no feeling that since they are paying the fee, it is completely the responsibility of the teachers. Yes. The teachers feel that my responsibility is the course, how to take care of the children. So when there is a parent-teacher meeting, yeah. So what happens when there is a parent-teacher meeting in the school? The parents will blame the teachers. the teachers will blame the parents and after some time they will join together to blame the government nice and how we deal with our close family members as well as uh, our colleagues our friends our acquaintances so as far as a relationship is concerned there are many things which maintain a relationship and uh, it sometimes we make mistakes uh, uh in uh, in our relationship with others but we strongly defend ourselves because we are like our own defense lawyers but when we uh examine the faults of others we act like a prosecution lawyer so maybe we should learn to balance how to be more critical and how to evaluate ourselves we have to introspect and see why we have not made the correct efforts what is behind and maybe we should evaluate uh, critically what the other person is trying to do and maybe there are certain things that that person did which we did not uh, what you call it we did not appreciate fully uh, so i was thinking all day about multiple relationships and of course i think did you assignment Yes sir I have some Okay very nice So
it's difficult that way. Sometimes there's problems in the family, but uh, sometimes the most stormy ones are in your uh, workplace. And those are the ones that are difficult to handle. And in every case, there is a reason by uh, for which a person says or acts in a particular way, which we should examine. And uh, I suppose one day we will come at peace with ourselves and the neighboring people. So are you able to uh, see that the intention of your colleagues at workplace is also pure? Uh, we are a bit, uh, if I use, uh, can I use a medical term, we are jaundiced. I mean, <laughs> we will always be slightly, uh, this thing, like we will always uh, be a bit suspicious of the motives of others. So that, that is inevitable. We have to observe a little more about the intention of the that others. Is what, that is what, we need more introspection. Yes. Very true. Nice. Thank you. Nice, sir. Yeah. Please tell your name also. Yeah. Dr. Jason John, from uh, professor from Department of Pathology, SRM Medical College. So I'm uh, Sridhar from Computing Technologies. From? So, uh, in fact, uh, the assignment too, yesterday I discussed with my spouse. <laughs> and <Ajay>. that was... <laughs> so I think most of the time we confuse this uh, compete, uh, sorry, uh, competence and intention. No? So that's the uh, basic thing. I could not... Uh, even I was trying to explain to her and uh, she was not able to pick it up. So maybe uh, in due course after this sessions we will w sit down and work together. And for example, in the assignment one, the first day you gave to write down the desires and all. No, so I was a little confused with uh, whether it is an intention or a desire. I think you made it very clear yesterday. So uh, some of them could be intentions. So I think few of the points which listed here uh, could be converted into. Uh, intentions, I suppose. I think. It, it yeah, can. we can see if there is a desire here. What could be the intention behind it? Mm. What would be the natural acceptance? Natural acceptance behind that. Yeah. And it was really an eye opener because I read a lot of books, but. Uh, and a I very good thing is that husband and wife are attending the workshop together. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> so thank you very much for this. I think I look forward to more of this. Nice, nice, sir. Good morning. I'm Dr. Krishna Mohan. Uh, so, uh, uh, in the assignment two, first, uh, regarding the series of questions, yes. Uh, so, again, uh, the uh, uh, intentions, intentions between the husband and wife, the way we understand. Again, right understanding is very important, which we, uh, which we realized, as Professor Sridhar also told. Uh, we will explore further. We'll explore further in due course of time. So that is there. And uh, regarding the takeaways from day two, so actually takeaway from uh, day one, day two, if you can, if you think, uh, what what is the thing is that we should be happy, we should be in harmony, yes, and which in turn will lead to mutual happiness, mutual prosperity and which in turn will help our family, our society to prosper well. So everything are interrelated. So it is a very good gesture that you related individual happiness, individual prosperity with mutual happiness, mutual prosperity, which in turn will, uh, what to say, lead to a holistic life. Thank you. Thank in my view, actually, intention is a status of mind. Nobody can read the other person's mind. I mean, uh, you only can assume that this person's intention is bad or good. So for the moment you stop assuming things, that is, if you, the moment you know, don't talk about the intention, you only react with respect to actions, probably there will be a mutual understanding and also harmony. And also, as I said yesterday, that uh, we all, all the human beings are complementary to each other. Once you understand that concept, probably we'll be able to lead a better life with uh, also with, uh, we can have mutual friends and everything uh, follows actually. That way we'll be able to live a harmonious life. Actually. Thank you. So there is some clarity required here as you said, said that intention is state of mind which is not being proposed here. We are saying intention is a natural acceptance. The state of mind is your competence. Or it is in your mind, it is like that. That's what I meant. Actually. What the other will do 
demonstrates his or her competence, not the intention. But the intention is the natural acceptance. I want to be happy, I want to make the other happy. I may not mind at that point of time because of which I am getting irritated and then I am hurting the other. But this is not my intention. This is what is being proposed here. But we can keep it open and keep on exploring. So we have to distinguish between intention and competence or intention and desire. No, what I meant is no, judging the other intention. You can take the mic closer. I'm, I'm, what I mean is no, judging the other intentions, not uh, my intention. Even, but again, we'll keep on exploring this. There is no need to judge the intention of the other. I can see very much that the intention is pure. It cannot vary. It cannot change from time to time. Intention is what I naturally want to be. I want, naturally want to be happy, I naturally want to make the other happy. But it's only that due to some conditioning or inclination on sensation, I'm not happy within me, so I'm not able to make the other happy. So there's a clear distinction between my intention, that is natural acceptance, and competence, which is the state of imagination in the self at that point of time. This is something that we have to distinguish. The more we are able to distinguish it clearly, it will also help us have a definite conduct in our relationship. I am able to see that the other is disturbed. That's how he or she is shouting on me. It's not that the other wants to shout on me. It's not that the other wants to hurt me. But the other is perturbed within, disturbed within. That's how the other is reacting. Okay, thank you. Uh, professor at uh, Department of Automobile Engineering. For me, uh, yesterday we were talking so much about harmony and other things. But the society is gradually moving towards the other way. Mostly in the present uh, day situation, political influence is taking away harmony and... No, we are talking about the takeaway from yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So takeaway from yesterday is the influence which is taking away everything, even though we are discussing certain aspects inside the four walls, how, um, whenever we are trying to do something, you are talking about pro uh, prosper prosperity. But uh, when we go out, in instead of prosperity, phosphorus is there. Okay, for every small thing, it is burning. So that is the situation. So we have to balance and we have to understand ourselves and we have to start living in harmony with uh, others, uh, colleagues, family members and other things. But the societal influence is uh, too much. In midst of that we are uh, living or we are trying to uh, find a way out and uh, to live peacefully. That is one thing. From day one, the only concern I was having is we were talking too much about animals and other things. As a pet lover, why we are unnecessarily bringing animals to compare uh, with the human beings, I don't know. Animals are far better than human beings in so many situations. As a pet lover, as a pet owner, or a pet parent, I know he understands my emotions far better than so many human beings. Without him, I cannot start my day. When I get up and go out, the first thing I used to get is a loving kiss from him, which is not expected nowadays from even from kids, because it is unconditional. So, and whenever I am stressed, he is, the, he is my partner. Okay, whenever I return home from 4.30, he'll be waiting for me at the entrance. And when I enter in, 30 minutes to 40 minutes without him, I cannot live. That is the situation, okay? so. Animals in one aspect is different as when it starts understanding our emotions. Having a pet and he, <laughs> he is a pet parent. <laughs> the thing is, so when the moment he see me, <clears throat> the joy we both get is entirely different. So um, uh, let us not um, uh, put uh, the term animal and uh, compare uh, uh, this thing. Because uh, it, it really hurt me the first day because uh, uh, I, I know uh, how much he is giving to me. Yeah, so do you know? My love and affection for the family and he is equal. See, when my son was getting uh, married, when there was a group photo, I was very particular and the entire family members were very particular. Without that there is no, without him there is no family photo. So in the album, his photo with my son is an exclusive photo, with the family is an exclusive photo.
So these are all uh, no, something saying, above. Uh, yeah, I'm saying it's very nice that we are able to live well with the animal. But would you like to have the feeling of affection, feeling of care, feeling of guidance with the human being also in the family? Yeah. 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 See. Many times it does happen that when we are not able to have fulfilling relation with the family. I, I used to outside. call him as Mon. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Mon in Malayalam means a son. Yeah. But anyway, that's nice. Many times it does happen that we are not able to have fulfilling relationship with the human being. Then we try to look outside. Isn't that it? Is with the animals or with the... Yeah. So we are taking care of um, uh, some four or five pets outside. Uh, during um, COVID Again, times... Again, you can keep on exploring whether the animal, the pet, have the potential to know or not. Like the way you can educate your child, can you educate the animal the same way or not? It, it is, see, that is not a matter. See, the understanding I am having. See, when I walk inside the campus, near a biotechnology research park here, we have uh, several uh, stray animals, dogs, so and so. By seeing me, by hearing my voice, they understand who I am. Yeah, but that means, I'm not able to have a similar feeling with the human beings there. No, it is not like that, sir. This is beyond that I'm telling. So <laughs> okay. human beings and human relationship, as I told you, family and friends are number one. This fellow is parallel for me. Okay. okay. I'm balancing with uh, all these things. Okay. Nice. See, five, nice. at five, during five occasions, at least, he has protected us from cobras. He never mind. He will fight for that. And after that, we will remove the cobra and let it out in the I mean, forest. But he will not allow that to enter in. But we are not able to have a similar fulfilling relation with the maybe other human beings in the family. We are not sure that they will protect me from cobra, though this animal will do. So that is, so the situations are different. No, no, see. Keep on exploring it anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my name is Balaji. I'm taking care of... Little uh, louder. Yeah, Balaji, yes. Associate Director for ITKM. Uh, so many things we were discussing for the past two days, but still I'm not so clear uh, uh, about uh, what we are discussing. Uh, that is my honest opinion. Uh, in fact, we were uh, using a lot of words like uh, intention, ability, assumption, compet competence, all those things. Uh, now only I'm trying to understand the real meaning of uh, these uh, terminologies. Uh, the main takeaway is uh, like uh, uh, talking means listening to others. That is really uh, a new uh, perspective of uh, this uh, terminology. And then trust is the foundation for any relationship. Uh, that is also a key takeaway from uh, yesterday's uh, session. Thank you. Okay. Are you able to see that human being is coexistence of self and body? Human beings? Is coexistence of self and body? Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. If there is any question that you are not able, anything that you are not able to understand, please do ask during the session itself. Yeah, the thing is like the entire content is, uh, looks like it is not uh, what is that, properly organized or uh, something like, uh, I'm unable to relate uh, the various points we were uh, discussing actually. So Though I'm enjoying the class uh, for the past two days, <laughs> yes. but still I think but do uh, ask. I need to spend a lot ask. of time. Uh, yeah. uh, then only I think I can understand. Nice. Uh, good morning to all. I am Dr. John. Um, of course, uh, I'm very happy to be here. And yesterday, so relationship, that's really a good lesson for me. So just I learned a lot. And the seven feelings, eight, nine feelings. So that really um, um, uh, opened my eyes. Really, I want to thank you. Out of nine, I, uh, of course, I am not comfortable with one um, uh, feeling is the respect. Uh, so the right respect or right evaluation, uh, that is still I'm not very clear. I'm not comfortable with that um, feeling. So what do you want as respect? Let's say if you want respect, what do you want essentially? Of course, uh, that madam is not here. What she told really, I fully agree with her. So we cannot uh, give respect based on the right ev evaluation of their uh, intentions or uh, whatever. 
so then uh, uh, now for yourself what do you want you want to be over evaluated under evaluated otherwise evaluated no or i, I want to respect a human as a human being no for yourself i am asking not respecting yes others. yes uh, as for me i want to respect as a human not even though he is he is coming and killing me he is coming to destroy me i want to see him as a respectful uh, human being yeah so what does that mean respect now that now the respect now that the feeling factor is different for me now now the definition is different okay of course as it will be very subjective so i understand okay fine i'll come to that again okay thank yeah. you thank yes. you Hello everyone. I am Matthew, heading the social work department. Uh, after you know attending these two days workshop, I completely understood my myself because of my attitude in the past life. Uh, I used to you know take some wrong decision because of my attitude, uh, because of my exposure. But after attending this you know workshop for the past two days. i clearly uh, understood who i am and uh, based on my you know uh, positive and negative now uh, i am able to take decision for myself as well as for the uh, family and for the society this is how actually i learned from this uh, two days workshop any particular take away from the discussion that we had yesterday regarding trust respect uh so take away means i i understood myself clearly despite now uh, my positive and uh, negativeness okay if you want me give uh, if you want me to give example for example uh see sometimes you know uh, we show some discrimination you know based on the you know color caste creed and uh, sex and sexuality but uh, we should not see like that yeah we have to treat everybody equally and uh, we should also understand others feeling and accordingly we should you know help them to you know uh, uh, understand themselves if they uh, lacks anything we can also help them to you know uh, help them selves nice thank nice, you sir. sir yeah you too yeah. <laughs> Very good morning, myself, Dr. K. Salusundaram, Professor and Head, Department of Corporate Section of Accounting Finance. Um, after attending these uh, two days, and attending the third day, a uh, lot of uh, depth and uh, width of knowledge of uh, different administrators here. Really, I'm able to understand. Uh, before coming over here uh, because we have no chance of interacting with them it made us to uh, shape us how to take decision without affect, uh, affecting the surroundings and made us to have uh, uh, interaction on issues and uh, valuing the uh, people highly um, all these uh, made us a lesson uh, how to um personally and officially make our life prosperous and uh, happily to bring it and our existence our presence must make the surrounding uh, to be very happy that would be the successful way of life i understood from the interactions over two years uh, two days moreover my expectation that um, more uh, activity based um assignments given it would better make us to be very happy instead of going on fully theoretically yeah that's all sir thank you good morning to one and all this is dr p saravanan head systems and also program coordinator for mba in artificial intelligence and data science uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for us so i give you a case study please kindly guide me whether i have understood exactly yesterday we had we have year marked for uh, department puja i belong to this department we are in this building only we have arranged to have the puja in the corridor as a common puja apart from that we have two officers three labs computer labs since i am taking care of the computer related courses and other programs uh, i want to have puja in uh, computer labs 
I have three programmers and one lab assistant. Since we are inside, I am unable to communicate to them directly. So I asked our dean's secretary to inform to the one of the senior programmer to make arrangement for all the labs. After 12.30, uh, soon after we went, within 10 minutes, we had the puja as a common one. Then apart from that, I want to have three more pujas, uh, pujas in three more labs. So I said it might be, I thought it might be ready. Immediately I asked the programmer, shall we go to our labs? He said, no, sir. We didn't reply for that. Then I asked with him, what happened? Let's we go to the lab. He said, no, sir, I didn't make any arrangement. Then angrily I asked with him, why I already asked the secretary to inform you, whether she didn't inform you. She told me, sir, but I said, no, I am unable to do. Then I asked with her, yeah, why you didn't inform her? He say, she said, sorry, sir, he said, uh, there was some death in his family. He didn't reveal that and all, but she said, like, he don't want to have the buja. He said, he may not be able to do. There is some problem in his family. Then I understood, because of the death, a week back, uh, there was a death, so he is not supposed to involve in that bucha, that is accepted, okay. Then I called the remaining two programmers, they are females. I asked what happened to, why, why don't you make the arrangement? Inside me, there is a thought process like uh, they are working here for a long period, it's their responsibility. Even if I don't ask them to make the arrangement, in department they are giving the they are bearing the expenses and all. They are not going to spend from their packet. So it's their responsibility. They are supposed to, but they have not Then they said, no, sir, we have a problem. Then again, it, it increases my <laughs> BP. <laughs> <laughs> then I controlled myself. Then I asked, why, what is the problem? She said, no, sir, problem. In my problem, what is the problem? Ma? No, sir, I, I could not involve in the puja. Then I understood, okay, something, it is related with female. Okay, what happened to other programmers? She is also female. Then I asked, why don't you ask her to make the arrangement? She is also having problem. So here, trust is important. I cannot verify this. Very sorry, I cannot verify this. They said, we have problem, we are unable to do. Okay, I leave up, I gave it up. Then uh, immediately, I myself made the arrangements. We were having the puja, but for puja, all those three are with me. They are coming along with us. If really they are having problem, if the guy one who said there was a death in his family, he is supposed not to involve in the pujas for a minimum of 11 days or 16 days as per our rituals. So he is not supposed to be there. And other two females are also along with us. I cannot tell them like, already you have problem, why are you coming here? I cannot ask. Right? So here, uh, to be frank, as a human being, immediately we may be able to analyze what has happened. I might have understood like uh, they don't have interest number one. They are not, in, uh, or otherwise I might have not having good relationship with them. That might be the basic one. But the moment when they said we, we, are, we haven't arranged for that, then I got angry, then I, 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 I tried to understand what was the problem, I understood. Then I didn't react to that. Then immediately I myself took care. If uh, before understanding the, this class, uh, I might have had the thought like, okay, they are not interested, so they are giving some excuses. Then after this class, I thought like, okay, whether this is related with the lack of competent, or whether lack of trust, or whether it is related with lack of right understanding, or is it related with the question of fulfilling the relationship. So all these are the, so now I am thinking like, okay, uh, I might have failed to have good relations with them, number one. Number two, trust. As you said, we have to verify the intention, whether it is genuine or ungenuine, right? So genuinity, we don't know, how can we measure that? How can we verify? But now I, I may start to analyze like whether this is related with uh, right understanding or relationship or trust and other parameters. And if possible, I will try to build upon that, all those within me. In future, I will try to inculcate, since we are in the administrative cadre, we have to, if not then it could create so many problems. Nowadays, there is uh, so many loopholes to both the genders. They can use any weapon as uh, their tool. If we shout, if we raise the voice immediately, they can say like in front of 50 or 20, he has shouted with me. So immediately the higher officials may have to take action for that. They cannot keep mum. So it's creating problem to every one of us. 
So now uh, I'm trying to control my temper and also start use the right terminologies. Once I start to use the right terminology, that itself is a success for this MDP. Thereafter, automatically it will inculcate in within me like, okay, Sarana, sit, think over it, don't react immediately. Even if you have to take revenge on them, think over it. <laughs> After some time, when you get an opportunity, try to implement if it is possible, if you are going to be in key position. If not, then please keep mum. Go ahead, accept, proceed. Okay, Thank very you, nice, sir. very nice, uh, good case study, I'll say. The very good thing is that you try to relate the content that is being shared here with this particular incident and try to explore it even, in that uh, situation. Even uh, my, my well-wisher Dr. V.M. Shenbhagaraman, he is the dean and boss, good friend of mine. He used to tell me, Sarvanan, you are getting angry, don't get angry, you look at me. In the first day, he said, nothing is in my control. <laughs> first day, he said, nothing is in my control. Uh, that's true. Even he is the boss, if he asks me, like, Sarona, you have to be here till 5.30. We are going to have knack work, you be here. If I don't be here, then what can you do? As a boss, if he may issue memo to me immediately, it may exclude somewhere else. So we cannot do anything. No, I'll come to that. See, so the good thing is that you try to explore in such depth, you know, yeah. all the situation. Now, here we can see that the other person is conditioned in a particular way. Though the natural acceptance may be pure, but still keep it open. The natural acceptance could be to make you happy. But maybe due to but that some... That is the problem, sir. Natural acceptance may... Have, you may have some artistic measure for that, but it differs to person to person. I may think like uh, when he say he cannot, in general scenario, I may have to accept as, as it is, natural scenario, natural yeah. acceptance. But I may think like, uh, how did he say no? He is supposed, he is, he is belong to that, it's his responsibility, he, so he is supposed to do that, but how can he say no? Yeah, so look at this, I'll come to that. I want to say, either slap them or shout at them or push them away. Yeah, but again, in this may happen with the other also, the other also may get opposed. Of course. But but you ask yourself, do you naturally accept to make this other person who is not obeying you happy or unhappy? To be frank, how, how that will come inside me? When, when he is not ready to make me happy, he no need to make me happy, but he is supposed to do his duty, no? Yeah, yeah. So the then, then there is no question of happy or not happy. It's his responsibility. He is supposed to do. In that situation, you are happy or unhappy? I am happy, I also, I also may have make him unhappy because of the dialogue which I am going to have. <laughs> sir, that's the truth, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is something that you shared. This is something to do with your competence and competence of the other three persons. Isn't it? But we can... So if it is related with the competency, in scientific way, competency is so far as measured like the capability. If you, I am knowledgeable, if I am able to do, whether it is mental work or physical work, whichever may be, if I am able to exhibit, implement, and can able to achieve your task, then I may be told I'll, I, as I am a competent person. Yeah. So right? this but when it is related with the feeling, how can we measure it as a competent? Yeah, I'm coming to that. So generally we relate competence to the skill part. Isn't it? And then we call some person as competent, some person as incompetent. But maybe we are only looking at the skill part or the action part. We are not able to see the feeling part. Now here you can see that you also got unhappy and you might have the feeling to make the other unhappy when you are getting irritated. Of but course. is that acceptable to you naturally? See, in that situation you are unhappy as you mentioned. Yeah. But did you want to be unhappy? No. No. So intention was sound for yourself to be happy, but you were unhappy. Yeah. Similarly, you can see that your intention might be to make the other happy, but you were not able to make the other happy because you were getting irritated yeah. inside. So there's some reaction inside though you did not express outside. Again, you can see that your competence in terms of making the other happy was lacking, though your intention might be sound, this could be true. But you have to keep it open. Because of that, he's making an attempt to say unhappy because of what person is getting irritated. Someone is irritating him, but because he is reacting, the entire surrender will be unhappy. Yeah, so most of the time we are looking at the competence or the lack of competence part. And we miss out this part. You see, so if you are not able to see question 4A, go to 3A, 2A, if not even, then go to 1A. Every moment you want to be happy, but you are not happy. Your intention is pure. Your natural acceptance is fine. 
but you are not having that competence. A so people team, may say like I am immature, I am not mature. So having, uh, uh, accepting the irritation, accepting the uh, other environment, all, only may be known as matured, maturity. So maturity you can say or competence ultimately, you know, it may be the case that I am preconditioned in multiple ways. And that does take time. It's not that just yeah. by attending a workshop for one with, day. Definitely with these three days, it may not be possible. We have to do a, a lot of groundwork yes, to precondition yes. ourselves. And so see, when, when we are running on our toes, like for example, four days, four days per hour, having some administrative work, uh, we are unable to sit, analyze, and precondition ourselves. But if we have the capability or competence, as you are suggesting, we are able to inculcate in each and every action then we may become uh, uh, more mature or I, I may be able to make everyone happy. So it does take time to put a tick mark here. Yeah. And for that, one has to start looking from question 2A. In fact, if you keep asking yourself whether I want to make the other happy or unhappy naturally, try to look into this. Even we are not clear about question 2A many times. If you are able to see question 2A as correct by yourself naturally, question 4A is no longer a mystery for you. But many times you are not able to see even this and that's how this 4A remains a mystery and there is a question mark here. And mostly we are looking at the lack of competence. If you can see in that same situation, your relation with the other three colleagues, it's not something new, it has a history. Many times you might have reacted, many times you might have dominated, for example, dominated or made them work which they did not like to do. And that reaction might be there as irritation inside. So they might have got this opportunity to say no to you or to make some excuses here. So in every relationship, we have a history in our family. It's not that we are you know, relating to the other person for the first time. Many times the other person might have got hurt by my behavior, by my attitude or something. And that is creating some irritation inside, some reaction inside. And that keeps on coming out on several occasions, isn't it? So we have to take care of the complete behavior. We have to see where I am lacking. Yeah, am I competent enough? So it may be the case that I am preconditioned in multiple ways. I am differentiating in multiple ways. And I have one way of one set of thinking, which is conditioned in multiple ways. I am also sometimes you know, having my imagination misguided by sensation. And then I am only partly competent. And the other person is able to observe the conduct based on this, though you may not be able to observe. We might have a conditioning that I am the boss, they are subordinate and they must obey me. The other person might have a different feeling. So the feeling that you have, the feeling that the other has is something to do with the competence. Though the intention is fine. Isn't it? But we'll keep it open and keep on exploring. See, we have just drawn your attention. Yeah. Take a mic. Talking about myself for about years. Yeah, my intention is always that I want to make others happy, okay. Then what happens is a situation comes when they hurt you. You again say, okay, let it go. Again, you do some, you keep, uh, you want to make them happy, you keep continuing. Again, they'll do one step ahead. Again, they will try to provoke you because I'm a person who gets angry, but anger is secondary. Emotional is first. That is, I get hurt first. But people convert that hurt to anger. Okay, now what happens is, the second situation is they do something again, you get hurt. Again you say, okay, let them be happy. Okay, then it goes to the third stage. So it keeps going on like this, then how long will you continue to make them happy is my question. So the whether it is in family or whether it is in the working atmosphere, yeah. this is one thing. <laughs> the second thing is relationship. I do not know, in a family, okay, relationship. I'll respond to that first. No, yeah. no, I'll just come, I'll ask my question because I'll forget. The first, <laughs> in family, relationship, okay, you fight, whatever it is with your children, your husband, whoever it is, but anyway, we know that it's our people, so we make a compromise. We say, okay, it's our uh, children who has done it and all that. But once when it comes to, <laughs> comes to office, your relationship is until you are wanted. Once you are no more there or 
uh, like you are a professor in a particular department and then you are moving on to some other department or whatever it is. I'm just giving a, maybe a wrong example, but okay. So that particular department where you were will no more consider you as you are required. It's just like the children, I remember my teacher used to tell in school days, that once she's not the class, she's no more the class teacher, once when you go to a higher class, the children will not wish her again. Uh, because she's no more a uh, class teacher, why uh, we should wish? That's the exact thing in a working atmosphere. So how do you grade the relationship, or I don't know whether to put it as grade, or how do you carry on with this relationship? Yeah. Because so, it's, yeah, now it's I'll, let me explain. Yeah, I got yeah, the question. Please. Yeah. So today you made a program for yourself to let it go. I am not saying that is the right program, or to ignore, to forget, you know, or to just let it be. This is not the right program. The right program is this. So I am able to see that the competence is lacking in the other. So I'll not ignore it, but rather I'll try to find a program so that I can develop the competence in the other. Now if I let it be, just let it go the way it is happening, then it will scale up. But if I am able to note it proactively that since the other person doesn't have the right understanding, he needs to develop the right understanding. And for that I also need to develop the right understanding. So I will get into dialogue. In fact, in place of ignoring, we will take it very seriously. But I will not react. Taking it seriously, I will try to develop the competence of the other. So for example, this workshop is going on with the management. Okay? Now this is something a proactive program. If the management has the right understanding, the faculty will feel assured towards the management. Then they will not have reaction towards the management to that extent which might be there right now. When the faculty has right understanding, the students will not have that kind of reaction. So proactively, I have to work in every relationship with this feeling of right evaluation. That if I have the competence, then I help the other become, become competent. It's not that I just ignore the other. If I have less competent, then I try to develop my competence. So this is the right program. And the second thing that you mentioned, yeah, we ignore the relationships after a certain period of time when the department uh, is changed or something, or you are not the teacher of the class, because we are not talking about relationship at all in our academics. We are only talking about skills. And why skills? For money, for job, for profession. So you are no longer meaningful to me, because I am not learning any skill from you any longer. And my priority is money. You are not there to help me earn money. So why should I value? But when we are able to take such content in the school, where we are able to talk about relationship, right understanding, then the relation of self to self becomes very apparent. Here also you will see that once you are able to relate to the other person at this level, even if the department changes or the person leaves this university, goes to some other place, you feel related. Because that relationship has got established. It is not at the level of some skill you know, or some other basis of differentiation. No, I am saying relate them better. Try to look into the relationship. In place of leaving it, I am saying you feel related all the time. Only if you are wanted. Pardon? <laughs> Only if you are wanted. No, in fact, you want or not, first of I all. I want. Yes. yes, I do want. So but I keep... cannot go barge myself inside, right? No need. I am saying <laughs> you want to have the feeling of relationship, but are you working with the feeling of complementarity or not? If not, then the feeling of relationship will go down. And this is not only happening in department or with your friends, this may also happen in the family. The children feel that my parents are there to train me to earn money. Once I am earning enough, why should I remember my parents? So that might happen. Yes, sir, I want to add up to what ma'am said. If you look at the entire case, this was a case study is already there. Every employee or every team goes through four uh, uh, quadrants of uh, uh, a, a, a life cycle. Initially, when he joins a department or when you join a team, you are an enthusiastic worker. You will do a lot of work. The second quadrant comes, you will be a reluctant worker. In the third quadrant, you don't do any work. In the fourth quadrant, you will become a threat to the organization. Probably, if we continue with any organization, we see that we go through these four phases. Initially, what we talk about, uh, our own organization, our own team is very high. Over a period of time, it drains out and you'll say, this is waste. We are wasting our time. So what a boss should be, what a leader should be in all these uh, things, it is already there as a case study. 
uh, well written case study when uh, when you see an employee in the quadrant one when he is enthusiastically working and draining out your yeah, his yeah, energy let, let me respond yeah, yeah yeah how will you respond and when he becomes a reluctant worker as a boss or as a leader what you should do when he becomes a, a no work he stops working what should you do and he becomes a threat to the organization what should you do there's already a good case study is there from a counselor to an advisor to how will you graduate and there are two more things that are well defined uh, management words are there one is the personal power and another is the positional power so uh, it, it even at home also it works when you go home when your son or kid is not doing something you offer i'll give you a chocolate if you do this what is that you are doing basically or if, as, a, as a father you are telling and he's listening to you what is that you used there as a technique these are all well defined uh, case studies are there yeah wait, I'm wait, sure. wait now let me respond yeah yeah so this is what is happening this is an appraisal of what is happening but is this naturally acceptable one thing second thing we do not have any program to develop the right understanding in the faculty or the management then these things are going to happen so that's how as we have the student induction program we also need to have faculty induction program if some faculty joins the university first of all let him or her go through this kind of self explorational exercise then we we'll see that the productivity the connectivity you know the efficiency this we may all you know go up from time to time love all the time in place of productivity going down yeah in place of in place of productivity going down yes sir yes sir i am responding to you yeah so in place of yeah, all the same thing is smiling and laughing at you. <laughs> so I'm just saying that see, looking at the lack of competence of others, we keep on developing theories, but we do not have the program to develop the competence of the other. So this I will not help. A, I have. Uh, Rajiv, I want to say yeah, something. Yeah. I wanted to say that any other human being. or you if you look at yourself also for fulfillment in your life you need three things you need the physical facility but you also need i also need the feeling in relationship and i also need the right understanding so if these three are not being fulfilled i am going to be unfulfilled and if you are only working on physical facility at work not helping the other or myself to improve the other two things then this situation will continue and this will happen with the children also our own children if we are only providing their fees they are we are providing them food and shelter but not the right understanding not the feeling then after some time they will disappear they will not have that feeling for you because they haven't imbibed it so for human being all these three things are necessary and this program is about <coughs> being able to see that it is necessary and the exercise 3 this assignment 3 is about how do we how do we in srm go about it as a part of our system we are certainly working on the physical facility the skills part so this is to draw our attention to whether these other two things are important and what we can do to help ourselves as well as each uh, the students to get there otherwise this situation will continue this is true what kumar is saying that we can theorize on the current situation we can make these four categories there are many theories of what is the present situation but how do we make it better is not just by rules and regulations that will not help sufficiently uh, yesterday we had a conversation with the vice chancellor and he was in a one line he said how i want the university i want it to be self organized self organized means that we are doing all these things and each person is not having to 
be told every time looking over the shoulder. He doesn't want attendance also, by the way. Where, where is? <laughs> uh, so he wants it to be such that each person has the right understanding, has the right feeling, so that they can work on their skills and the other things with, uh, without being having to, you know, you keep running after them. But that's a long way to go, but we have to work on all the three. If we are only working on the skills part, then that is not sufficient. For ourselves also it is not sufficient, for the children also it is not sufficient. So that's what I just wanted to add. Nice. Let me recap uh, all that we have discussed till yesterday. Sir? Yes. <laughs> Ji. I have a point to make here, sir. We had a lot of takeaways. I really thank you for all the takeaways. Now, the problem is now I'm in a confused state. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than being conditioned. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, now the problem is the people who are all attending UHP. It's not just us alone. All the people who have attended UHP so far. Now, we are in a sandwich state. We are dealing with our superiors. Probably they have not attended this UHP. So they are probably in the animal consciousness. Now, since you have told us about human consciousness, now we are going towards human consciousness. And we have our subordinates. Again, they are also in the animal consciousness. Now, what are we supposed to do? See, we are always, I feel like after attending all these things, after getting all the deliberations, we are in a sandwich state where we are always in the receiving end. We have to always understand that will ultimately result and frustration. Now, based on the assignment which you gave, it was really very interesting and very good. I went and I discussed, you know, in the you know, family members, so to my mother, to my daughter, and to my uh, husband. Uh, all the three were sitting, and I was asking them, and I was telling them. In fact, my daughter was more curious to know what is it that you're doing for the both, uh, you know, for the whole two days, what were all uh, you understood, and other things she was asking me. So when I was asking, do you want me to make me happy, and uh, like that, I was asking her all these things. All uh, silent listen for some time and they asked me one question in unison they asked me why are you telling us all these things that was the instant reaction which I got from my daughter and from my mother my husband asked me what are you telling as if I don't know all these things I know all these things now you have given us a beautiful theory of knowledge see like we all know whatever you have discussed we all know we have been attempting to even follow in many occasions different occasions but I was not able to give a justification so that justification I was able to give them yesterday like this is a theory of knowledge this is how it is all right and I also understood that desires are the root cause as Gautam Buddha said desires are the root cause of all evil ultimately it is because of preconditioning Right? Now the problem is how to uncondition others and even ourselves. How to un uncondition wherever we are preconditioned. And it requires transformation for every single individual. Right from the topmost political system to the grassroots level. It is the complete transformation because we get a lot of messages from them. You know, from the rules we follow, we are supposed to follow, from the guidelines, etc. If at all this program is undergone by every single individual, definitely it is going to give a very remarkable uh, change. A paradigm shift will be there. But unless and until, I don't know how many years it is going to take for that. <laughs> but unless and until, I think we are going to get a lot of issues. <laughs> as I said, no, we are sandwiched between the top as well as in the bottom. Super, superiors as well as the subordinates. This is my now, point. responding to the first part, I'll say that it is always there, that we are, they are embedded in relationship. The persons around us may not be having the same understanding, isn't it? That would be there. But I am also able to see with this understanding that their intention is fine. They want to understand, they want to live the right way. It's only that the competence is lacking. In that process, when I try to relate to them, I develop my competence also, helping them develop their competence. So this is an opportunity and not a problem, rather. But how long will we be able to take it, sir? We are also, no, I am afraid, like, we will also get back to the animal consciousness. No, not, not <laughs> from necessarily. From human. Not necessarily. You just see the people working below you. you know? Now they are gifted because those who are sitting on the right. top now are going to live in human consciousness. Okay. Isn't it? <laughs> Above us. <laughs> they might also be having this kind of problem, isn't it, earlier? 
True. If they are attending the workshop and they are troubled by the boss, then they might have this kind of problem. So I don't know how will we be able to get this sattvic mentality. I don't know. No, see, it's not a matter of time. The point is, this is what I really want to be. So what else will I do? I'll do this only. And as Madam rightly pointed out, it is first emotions which get into picture. That is basically because we are lacking competence. So emotions means our conditioning of feelings. Getting irritated, getting opposed, getting angry, you know, getting sometimes revengeful. These all things come into picture because we are conditioned to feel in that particular way. But once I am able to understand myself as self and body, I am able to see the other also. I am able to see that I also have desires based on preconditioning, sensation and natural acceptance. The same thing holds true for the other also. So the way I can transform myself, the other can also do. Maybe today also. It's only that he or she has not been given this proposal, isn't it? But when I help the other develop the competence, I learn from the other also. And this is how we are mutually happy in the relationships. If you keep aside all the relationships, you are not happy. So being embedded in relationship, we are able to see how we can fulfill the relationships. Second thing I'll say that what you cited as the saying from Buddha, he's not saying desire is the cause of suffering. He's saying craving is the sort of uh, cause of suffering, not desire. Desire and craving are two different things. Desire is an activity of yours. Craving is when it is preconditioned. You are expecting something without developing the competence. Isn't it? Then it becomes a craving. Thank you, sir. Yeah. But then there is no peace inside. Yes, because we are into a self-defeating process. On the face of it, we have won. But by defeating the other, I have violated the relationship. Yes. And you argue maybe with somebody in the family. And the you pain is there, we feel that. Yes, yes. You argue with somebody, Hannah, prove the other wrong. Yes. But ultimately, the relationship has got violated. In the department also, it may happen. You may find faults with others, prove the other wrong. Yes. Isn't it? But then the other starts avoiding you. Now making the other work becomes difficult. It is always a process, madam. And it is going to be a little time consuming. Yes. It will try your patience. And uh, you need to stick with the process, provided you wish to have that competence. As uh, madam was saying, there are always easy solutions and difficult solutions. Easier ones, like Sir Sonalia Nala Domain. So, the fourth domain, which is a threat to the organization, Abdina, easy solution is to fire this entire MDP group. <laughs> and, and have only the lowest rank, which will work for the organization. Yeah. But it's not that simple. As Sir was saying, these are theories. It is not that one person is going to be stuck in that domain. We keep moving between these four domains. Okay. In fact, we have found that if a person goes through this process of self-exploration, he enters into a new domain, he becomes responsible just like he is owning the institution. That way he starts functioning, isn't it? You take the complete responsibility of the task at hand. You feel that this department is yours and you have to make it work you know, harmoniously. That kind of sense is also observable. That has been put in different ways by different civilizations. One Western civilization would call it as Maslow's hierarchy. Yes. We call it as attaining or attainment of nirvana. Yeah. So the difference between you know what you want and what you need is entirely different. So once we understand the difference between what we actually need and what are our wants, and if you are able to stick with what our needs are. And that will involve a lot of sacrifice. Like as Sir was saying, unconditional love is something which we expect in relationship. But that is difficult with human beings because we have evolved. We cannot expect another human being, wife or the Koda, to be at the door, smiling at us, you know, waiting to hug us and jump over us every day for all days, entire year, and throughout our life. That is impossible because that is another human being which had, with a complementary set of competencies. So we can expect this from our pets. And the next thing is that we expect this from other human beings. Are yeah. we ready to fulfill the expectations? That, Similar expectations that is where it comes. See, uh, I am Marul Saravanan. Yeah. I am a doctor. Before that, I am a parent and a uh, husband. 
I'm a doctor, I'm a psychiatrist, and now I'm charged with uh, the office of medical superintendent. So there is only a finite time and effort. I have to decide whom I am going to keep happy. Whether MS Sarul Sarunan has to be happy, or whether psychiatrist Sarul Sarunan has to be happy, these are questions and challenges. But ultimately, what I find is that unless Arul Sarandan is happy, <laughs> none of this is going to be possible. Okay? So that way, this uh, course, I think, is an uh, added uh, enlightenment, I would say. Thank yeah, you. But I would like to have nice. one final. Uh, it is possible also. But when you are in uh, society or when you are given a responsibility, uh, we have to, you know, go out of uh, some of these things. For example, if the student is committing a mistake inside the class, if the student, is our, is? Yes, uh, uh, yeah. the student makes a mistake or whatever it is, it is our responsibility to point out that mistake and, uh, you know, uh, we should help them to come out of that mistake. We, not, we cannot accept as it is. No, I'm not saying that accepting as it is means not developing the competence of the other. I'll accept the student as he or she is, and then make a program accordingly to develop the competence of the other. We have found many times this we experimented in Bhutan, we also experimented in some other universities that the students are doing some such kinds of mistakes and you know, then make them attend this kind of <laughs> workshop and they come up with very good motivation to explore further and to develop further. In fact, in Bhutan, one Gedu college, three students were found taking drugs in a washroom. Then the student disciplinary committee you know, uh, met and they decided that these students have to be fired. Then there was one faculty there, who Umesh Bhaiya, who came here. He said that, no, I'll keep them in my house and we'll try to counsel them. So in place of firing them, because they had to be suspended and then rusticated, he kept them in his house. And in three to four months, they came up with very good students, came up like very good students and become kind of a set for the institution. So you have to make the right kind of program for the students. Just suspending them, rusticating them may not be the right program. Do we have any program to develop their competence to begin with? In the home, they are not getting that opportunity. In the education, they are not getting their, this opportunity. The surrounding, the media is not giving this opportunity. Then who is to blame? Isn't it? It's, it's not about their uh, changes in their behavior and other things. The, the particular task given to us and given to them, no? that itself uh, contradicts actually. We expect something from the student and we are supposed to you know, get things done from the students and that is not happening. So it's, it's kind of a mistake or uh, you know, a kind of a gap in the student's yeah, attitude. Yeah. So as Rajul was mentioning, you know, the mostly we are concerned about work, the task at hand, seldom about the relationship and the understanding part. Yeah, so we, just we have a different uh, characters, you know, as he said, uh, in the individual uh, husband, uh, father, and also a teacher, head of the department, so many things. Uh, it's very difficult to, you know, bring all these things into into our character. If if it is, if I'm an individual, yeah, it is fine. It is possible, everything within my part. And another one is there is a contradiction between making others happy and uh, making myself happy. See. Uh, uh, for example, uh, I, I tried, uh, no, it's, it, it, it must have happened in many uh, people's life, uh, the old parents, right? So they are in their own place, they uh, lived there for a long time, right? When they are sick, if you want to bring them to your place, making a AC room and all comfortable, uh, they will not come. So sitting other shoe is sometimes very difficult uh, because the shoe size are different. So what I feel uh, you know, will be happy to them is definitely not. So they have their own you know, state of mind. Yeah. Uh, it so it so happened that our old parents also might not have right understanding. And they have one notion of happiness, we have another notion of happiness. And the basic problem is this, that our notions of happiness are not based on right understanding. So there is a conflict. If one has the right understanding of happiness, there is no conflict at all. If I'm able to see very clearly that happiness is to be in harmony, well and good, I'll go by this. But we are not having this kind of understanding, isn't it's it? It's also a matter of time, right? Probably uh, we don't have enough time. Yeah, because we are too much busy yeah, with physical too facilities. Too much busy and yeah. uh, because uh, like how sir mentioned, we have so many students uh, with 
a varied uh, problems, I mean, variety of interest and anything. So probably we want everybody to graduate at the same time with a good job, but there could be slow learners, fast learners, uh, some with problems, some without problems. So they need time. So if we run saying that they have to graduate within time and I have to complete and go, in that way we cannot achieve. Uh, but some need really a lot of time. And uh, I think if we can try, we can change. At least uh, that uh, conference, probably because of the counseling and seeing students' uh, problem, I've seen that probably they might be late. Uh, they might not graduate with it immediate with a good job, but probably after two years, a little later, uh, there can be a change. Yeah, but we want to make their parents happy, right? That is our intention also. Uh, so that's what, like how uh, our workshop is meant, we need to make the right understanding to the parents also <laughs> actually uh, See, like a, so, a small situation small uh, incident i think uh, probably i might have shared to some of them so there was uh, this one student uh, who had uh, relationship issues uh, when i was a faculty advisor so he was constantly uh, behind one uh, girl they were in a relationship but uh, when a girl says no it's a no Right. So she broke up and he still did not accept the truth and he was getting very, uh, uh, I mean, he was, he was not, he was a good student but then all of a sudden because of the relation and breakup issues, he was continuously not coming to the class and then he was threatening the girl, you should not go with anybody, you should not sit with anybody and all and the girl complained and uh, when it comes initially reaction, obviously we will shout, why did you do, how did you do, etc, etc, etc and all. And then the student had a very interesting story. Uh, he came to us and we asked him, see so many, uh, uh, girls are there. If this is not the girl, you can think about somebody else, no? And uh, he told a very interesting story. He said, Mom, do you pray God? I said, yeah. So you ask him something, right? So God will not grant you immediately. What will you do? I said, I'll pray again. That is what I am doing, Mom, he told me. He said, she's my God. <laughs> she did not agree. I will keep trying, trying, trying. One day she will agree, probably. You know, that was type of uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, correct. But my question is, uh, uh, parents are there, students are there. We have to prioritize, no? No priority, sir. No, no, equal see, priority. See, we cannot make them happy, both parent as well as student, right? So that should that's we can make. Priority. Yeah. So it boils down to understanding what happiness is. Happiness is not fulfilling the desires. Right understanding. <laughs> yeah. Myself not competent, then how can I take de develop the competence of the student? The story about a teacher that he was solving one numerical of mathematics, and when he has solved, the student asked us, sir. Sir, I could not understand. Then he had to solve the numerical again. Again, the same student said that, Sir, I did not understand. He solved it again. When the fourth time he said, he said that, solving this, I have come to understand. Why don't you understand? <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> See, ourselves do not have the right understanding, and we are trying to instill the right understanding in the child. Okay? Maybe in that process, we develop our understanding first. Okay, so let us recap what we have discussed in the past two days. So we could see that human consciousness means that as a human being, I require all the three. Right understanding in the self, relationship with human beings, and physical facility with the rest of nature. With right understanding only, I am able to ensure mutual happiness in my relationships. With right understanding only, Something there? He's talking about feedback, you have to ask from everybody. That is what I love this are saying. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, so yesterday I was taking from here, and I'm, maybe after tea break I'll take from this part. <laughs> sir, what Anyone who has not spoken so far, is, sir, you have you spoken so far? No, sir. So maybe he can give in the mic. The takeaways from my, that on the first day I thought most of the troubles caused because of the relationship I felt. The next day you took to uh, trust that, you know, that intention and com competence, all these things, then I, I got that just one, uh, the doubt, the trust what we are uh, talking, that if you see the uh, US currency, in God we trust. What is that trust? and what we are discussing about in this relationship. So here we are saying that trust means to be assured. 
that the other wants to make me happy in god we trust now what god means we have to understand what is god this is also something to be understood because many times it might happen that when you do not understand the reality in completeness something remains as a mystery to me and then i assign certain words to that mystery for me so i have to understand what god means i have to understand what nature means what existence means so all these things have to be understood otherwise it remains as a kind of conditioning in me so you can keep it open for now yeah yeah thank you thank you